Don't you always feel better after a good glass of wine with a girlfriend? Me too. That's what we're here for. To connect, to drink wine, to feel good. Welcome to the Happy Moms Wine Club. I'm your host, Jenny Angel. If you have little ones in the room with you today, you may want to put your earbuds in because from time to time, I will use swear words or drop a truth bomb about motherhood that you may not want little ears to hear. So grab your earbuds and put them in because today, I'll do both. Today we are so going to talk about sex, but before we do, I have to tell you, I launched the Happy Moms Wine Club podcast with three episodes on September 1st, and since the overwhelming response from you has been, I am in, sign me up. I love it. Thank you. Many of you have joined the Happy Moms Wine Club conversation by subscribing to this podcast. Some of you love wine and have joined the actual wine club by going to www.happymomswineclub.com and registering either for amazing wine to come straight to your doorstep every month or for free amazing wine to be delivered straight to your doorstep every month. Thank you. I want you to know I'm so happy and so excited for all of you to be in this with me. The Happy Moms Wine Club is a place to connect and refuel and be inspired and encouraged. And it's so much more. It can be a dream come true for you and your family too. I'll speak more about that later. But if you're curious now, you can go to www.happymomswineclub.com, click on the free wine button, and learn about the other ways that this wine club can make a difference for you and the people you love. So thank you for listening and writing to me. Thank you for joining the wine club. Feel free to post a link on Facebook and invite your friends to join the Happy Moms Wine Club and subscribe to this podcast. This is one club they do not want to miss, and they will definitely thank you for introducing them. Free wine? Yes, please. Thank you. Right? Come on, somebody. So today we're going to talk about sex. We've been talking about different ways to fuel and fill you up as a woman and as a leader in your home. Because you can't pour from an empty cup. And another great way to fuel your greatness is sex. I promised you in podcast three that I'd share about my colossal sex fail. And in this episode, I will. And all I ask in return is that you write a review and tell me what you got out of the episode. Or you go to the Happy Moms Wine Club Facebook page and you share something about yourself with me. It doesn't have to be sex related, of course, just a picture of you and your family or a story about your life. Because in one respect, I feel like I know you. I know you're a mom. I know that you love your kids like crazy. I know that you'd do anything for them and that you've given them your time and energy every day for years to make their lives amazing. I know that hearing them laugh is one of the best sounds ever. I know that you're proud of them. I know who they are is one of your greatest accomplishments in life. And I know that nobody could possibly thank you enough for all you've done for them. But because I know you this way, because I am you in some ways, I'm going to take this moment to say, I see you. I see the way that you worry about them and what they're doing in life. And I know you worry because you love them and you want the best for them. I see you. I see how much you give to make them happy. I know it takes something to keep showing up for them the way that you do. I acknowledge what you've done and what you continue to do every day. I am impressed by you. Thank you for all the things that you do to run your household that nobody remembers to acknowledge you for. I know how hard you work. Thank you. For every time that you stood in an aisle at the store with a list in your hand and made a thousand decisions in a 30-minute time period to buy them back-to-school supplies, for every time you changed a diaper in the middle of the night so they'd sleep better even though you were exhausted, for every time you did another load of laundry that nobody would ever acknowledge, I want you to know I see you. I say thank you. Thank you for all you've done that I can imagine. And thank you for everything that you've done that I can't even imagine because it's unique to you. You are amazing. I appreciate you. Thank you. That's what I know about you. That's who you are for me. Everything else I need you to tell me. So here's my invitation. 
Write me stories or send me pictures of you and your loved ones on the Happy Moms Wine Club Facebook page. I figure if I'm going to tell you secrets about my sex life, I'd love to know more about you and know that we're in this together. You're my village now. Let's connect. Okay, you've heard my request. Now let's talk about sex. In this episode, we're going to talk about why men are more interested in sex and, dare I say, sometimes better at it. Not always. But be honest with me. Have you ever caught yourself in the middle of sex making a grocery list in your head? Or planning what meal you'll serve when company comes that weekend? He's pumping away, doing all of his best stuff, and your mind is completely elsewhere? That happens to me, too. Don't worry, it's normal. Today, your man is going to thank me. I am going to tell you three sex secrets that make us ladies better lovers. I know they work, too, because one time at the beginning of my marriage, I asked my husband, on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being awful and 10 being amazing, how would you say I perform sexually? He said three. Ouch, right? I'll tell you why he said that later, but what I'll tell you now is that that was one of the hardest conversations we've had in our marriage. I thought he'd say nine or ten, and the fucker said three. I was pissed. I was hurt. And hell, no, I did not want to have sex with him that night. So be careful, ladies. That question I asked is powerful and will transform your relationship, but it is not one to be asked lightly. Because my man gave me an honest answer, and it took something to talk through it all once I was already hurt by his truth that I was completely blindsided by. The point is, that conversation was 10 years ago. When I asked my man today, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate my performance sexually, he gave me a 9. I know. I know you're thinking seriously, what an asshole. But he's not. He just doesn't give out 10s because he always wants to leave room for improvement. He actually said nine plus, but whatever. <laughs> so in the last 10 years, I went from the bottom of the how's my sexual performance scale to as high as I can go. And I'm going to tell you the three secrets of sexual success that I hope will make a difference for you as well. By the end of this episode, you will know things about your body that you never knew before. You'll see how one of the ways you're wired as a woman can sabotage your sex life. And you'll be inspired to try something new with your partner that you may have never tried before. Don't worry, it's not anal. All right, let's do this. Let the vulnerable sharing begin. How many of you have ever experienced sex like it's something you check off your to-do list? You don't even really care if you have an orgasm. You just want to get it done so he'll stop grabbing your boob or looking at you that way. Maybe you prefer morning shower sex so you can get him done fast and then be showered and done for the day with minimal effort or interruption to your busy schedule. Maybe you've made the mistake of saying the words out loud like Miranda does on Sex in the City where her partner Steve's trying to rock her world in bed and she says irritably, Just get it over with already! I've never said that out loud, but one time during sex, I said pickles. And my husband looked down at me and said, am I interrupting your grocery list making? I just made a face like, oops, was that my outside voice? No. Nope. My husband is really gracious, though. He knows that that happens from time to time and that it's normal. So now he just goes with it. He'd be like, we need mayo, too. And he'd keep doing his magic. <laughs> it wasn't always this way, though. Ten years ago, when my kids were both babies, my husband asked me a question that rocked our world. He asked me, on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being awful and 10 being amazing, how would you rate our sex life? I looked at the fact that we had sex regularly and orgasm together as a sign that this was an exercise in patting ourselves on the back, so I said enthusiastically, 11! He got quiet. That's when I realized this conversation wasn't what I thought. I hesitantly asked why. What would you give us? He said three. I'm not going to lie. I was reeling. That hurt so much that it took me a long time to be able to hear his explanation. But when I finally could, what I heard him say was, I want to feel like you desire me, and I don't feel that from you. I want to feel like you're attracted to me. I want to feel like I'm the man. Like when you see me, you want to rip my clothes off and ravish me. I want to feel wanted by you, not just sex. 
not just something to check off your list. I want to feel pursued by you. My response terrified us both. I said, I don't know how to do that right now. That's all I could muster. Hurt and fear made me feel like my voice was trapped deep inside my chest, locked in a cage that I didn't have the keys to access. When a thought about what he'd said bubbled to the surface, I was too afraid to say it out loud for fear of making this horrible situation worse. But since we're all moms here, I can tell you, now, that I was having thoughts like, how am I supposed to make you feel attractive when I feel disgusting? Or how am I supposed to make you feel like the man when I've got babies crawling all over me all day, and by the time you get home from work and you feel great about your day, I feel like shit because I've gotten nothing done. And no, I don't want to rip your clothes off. I want you to hold these fucking babies so I can rip my own clothes off and finally get this poop and baby puke smell off of me. And the final thought that I was thinking, but thankfully never said out loud, was, I'm sorry you feel like you're one more thing I check off my list, but you're lucky you even make the fucking list right now. Now clearly I was hurt and upset. But have you ever had thoughts like that? Huh. Phew, I'm not the only one who's ever had a sex fail. What I'll tell you next will bring freedom and peace. This is actually a totally normal problem for moms to run into with their partners. We're not just being bitchy. How our brain is wired can, in fact, sabotage our sex life. But don't worry. Learning what you're about to learn will definitely help. The sexual brilliance you're about to receive is not from me, Jenny Angel, a mere mortal, but rather from Dr. Lee Ann Brisendine, a neuropsychiatrist at the University of California that wrote the book The Female Brain. I highly recommend it. So first I promise to tell you about my sex fail, and next I promise to tell you why men are more interested in sex. The answer that I found in Lee Ann Brisendine's book The Female Brain is that men have, on average, 10 to 100 times more testosterone than women. Testosterone is a sex hormone. The sex-related centers in the male brain are actually two times larger than the sex centers in the female brain. Men have double their brain space and processing power devoted to sex as women. Just as women have an eight-lane superhighway for processing emotion, while men have a small country road, men have O'Hare Airport as a hub for processing thoughts about sex, whereas women have the airfield out in the boonies that lands small private planes. That is why guys usually have to talk women into sex. It's not usually the first thing on a woman's mind. Now those are the differences in the brains of men and women. Add the changes to a female's brain that happened during motherhood And there's even more damage to her libido. The changes that happen in the mommy brain are the most profound and permanent of a woman's life. For as long as her child is living under her roof, her GPS system of brain circuits will be dedicated to tracking that beloved child. When a new dad feels like his wife no longer sees him, this is why. His wife has left the building. She's been taken over by mommy brain. New mothers lose an average of 700 hours of sleep in the first year postpartum. Not only is her brain wired to put all of her attention into keeping her babies alive, what it craves most after that is sleep. (laughs) Sorry, dads, you're not at the top of the list again for a couple years. This is the season of life that I was in when my hubby felt unseen, uncared for, and undesired by me. Now, some of you may have had more resources during the baby stages. Maybe grandma could take the kids so you could have a date night or a friend could babysit so you could get some much-needed couple time. I didn't have that luxury. We lived far from family in a new town where I knew no one. That's not an ideal way to do the first couple years of motherhood. So if I had the chance to give my younger self advice before entering motherhood, I'd say make more friends and ask her help. Don't do it alone. It's freaking hard. If you don't, your husband will end up feeling like he's just a paycheck, and it doesn't have to be that way. He's important. Find ways to make him feel loved. So we already covered 
why men want sex more and what's one way a new mom's brain is wired that sabotages sex but what's one more way that a woman's brain interferes with our sexual performance even if we're not new mommies what has us making grocery lists in our head during sex instead of being in the moment we are distracted continuously and easily by the amygdala the amygdala is the fear and anxiety center of the brain Orgasm only happens once this beast has been shut down. Before the amygdala has been turned off, any last-minute worry about work, about the kids, about schedules, about getting dinner on the table, can interrupt the march toward orgasm. Picture a woman's brain like an iPhone with a hundred different apps in use, all draining her battery. Before she's ready to perform sexually, each one of these apps needs to be shut down. The fact that a woman requires this extra neurobiological step may account for why it takes her, on average, three to ten times longer than the typical man to reach orgasm. Ladies, if you're not relaxed, comfortable, warm and cozy, orgasm is not likely to happen. This next part is important. Listen up. I'm about to tell you how to shut the amygdala beast down. For many women being relaxed, thanks to a hot bath, a foot rub, a vacation, or alcohol, aka wine, improves their ability to have an orgasm. So if your hubby's flinching at all at the cost of joining the wine club with me, just say, babe, we're joining the Happy Moms Wine Club so we can start our own orgasm club. He'll sign you right up. (laughs) I'm going to be honest with you, going from a three to a nine plus on the sexual performance scale didn't happen for us overnight. I'm going to wind down this podcast by telling you the questions that I asked Chris that began to reverse the damaging effects of mom brain. And then I'm going to complete this podcast by telling you some of the most important ways that my hubby and I found to tame the distracting amygdala beast and keep my head in the game during sex. Probably some of the most important questions I ever asked Chris about our sex life are, how have I made you feel pursued? What do I do that makes you feel like I want to rip your clothes off? What have I said before that makes you feel like the man? I want you to feel like I want you. How have I made you feel that way before? Ladies, take notes. Those are great questions to ask your man. And then use what he says in your life. My husband's answers were really helpful. He said, it's the way you look at me. The way you touch me when we pass each other in the kitchen and the way that you hold my gaze. Now, let me pause right here, ladies. You know the difference between looking at someone like they're sexy and you want their hot bod now and not even seeing them, right? I invite you to practice these different looks if you're alone in the room. That's okay. No one's watching you. I'll walk you through it. Pretend your man is in front of you. Look at him like he just walked in the front door. Oh, oh wait. You forgot to look up from Facebook. Actually look at him. <laughs> Smile and say, hi, babe. Okay, good. Now you know how that feels in your body. Now, pretend he's across the room and give him your best. I want to rip your clothes off and fuck you right here, right now. Look. Ooh, girl, that one's hot. You can feel the difference, right? It may have even made your naughty bits tingle. Good job. That is the one. That, right there. How I was being when I looked at my husband like I wanted to rip his clothes off, that's what he wanted more of. So that's what I gave him. More loving touches, more playful, flirtatious conversation. I pinched his butt more. I felt his muscles more. I saw him. That made a huge difference for him. What did we discover that made a difference for me to tame the amygdala beast? First, a boundary. We created an early bedtime for our kids so that there was a specific time of every day where mom was officially off duty. Then Chris and I would go snuggle on the couch and watch a TV show. That gave us an opportunity to touch and be close and began the process of vegging out, which always helps to shut down the brain. Then after some time vegging out, but not too late, we'd set another crucial boundary when we went to our bedroom. We'd lock the door. Nothing rips a mom's brain out of sex mode like worrying that a kid might walk into the bedroom. 
After that, we'd turn on the bathroom fan for white noise and turn on sex music to set the mood and keep the amygdala beast from waking. I recommend creating a station called Sensual Beats on Pandora or using the Fifty Shades of Grey soundtrack if you don't already have your own sex playlist. Brushing teeth before sex is one of the hoops I make my husband jump through before engaging in coitus. Don't laugh. I'm sure you have hoops for your man to jump through too. If your room is messy or you're feeling bloated from the pasta you had at dinner, turn off the lights or use a blindfold to block out distractions. One of my favorite life hacks that I created that I'll share with you is to put a bin full of washcloths beside your bed for easy cleanup after sex. Before you get started, just grab two washcloths, one for you, one for him, and tuck them under your pillow so you can reach them easily afterward. If men knew how many times their women didn't have sex because she didn't want to have to wash the sheets after they were spilled on, they'd all make bedside washcloth bins too. Okay, those are all the tricks to tame the amygdala beast and to help keep your brain from being distracted during sex. But what should you focus on? Think about how your skin feels where he touches you. Think about how he feels inside of you. Think about if you two were making a sex scene in a movie, what would it look like right now? If all else fails, if you're super distracted, pretend he's your celebrity crush. That'll tame the amygdala beast. Now, ladies, this whole episode has been full of ideas that'll help you during sex, but we're going to end with something that you can do to help him that you may have never done before. What does he crave that he probably isn't getting enough of? feedback. I'm not talking about filling out a comment card after sex and putting it in the suggestion box. I'm talking about noise. Make some noise. Most men have no idea if what they're doing in the bedroom is working at all, and ladies, that's our fault. We don't give enough feedback. Changes in breathing as we approach orgasm happen pretty automatically. Before that, use your voice as a roadmap for him. Give him a moan. Come on, cheerleaders, help me out. If his hand cups your breast just right and it feels good, give him an M. Mm. If he nibbles your ear and it sends tingles to your toes, give him an O. If he enters you and grinds against you in a way that takes your breath away, give him an A. When he clamps down on your nipple and sends you over the edge, give him an N. Mm. What's that spell? Moan. Phew. Is it getting hot in here? I need another glass of wine. Talk to you next week. If you'd like to be notified each time we release a new podcast episode so you don't miss out on any of these conversations, hit subscribe now in Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcast from. I would love to hear your mom stories and connect with you on our Happy Moms Wine Club Facebook page too. Tell me what you made you laugh in a certain podcast or what else you'd love to hear about. If you want to join our actual Happy Moms Wine Club, and learn about how to get amazing wine delivered to your doorstep for free, go to happymomswineclub.com now. See you next week.